Hello, this is Professor Scott Norman at Pittsburgh State University in the Automotive Fuels Lab. And today we've been doing a lot of uh, pour point and cloud point uh, testing on different um, automotive uh, fuels. In an earlier video, um, uh, I had uh, how to uh, set up the, the bath of uh, CO2, dry ice, and acetane to be able to get a, a, a bath of liquid uh, acetane down to negative 90 degrees is where I'm currently at as far as with that bath and how to set up my samples. And so right now I have four different samples. I, I tested some different uh, uh, diesel fuel treatments uh, earlier. And so you can see that in my previous video. Uh, on this particular video, uh, I currently have in the bath, I'm, I'm actually looking at uh, cloud point right now. I have regular diesel fuel. And so I have regular diesel fuel as my baseline. And right now I'm at uh, 10 degrees above zero. And if I take a look at this, this is already clouded. So you can kind of hopefully see the cloudiness in that. And so you can see how at the very bottom of it, you kind of have like a cloud in there. And so that's the wax uh, in the fuel starting to, um, to be a solid, <laughs> which is not good. So for your fuel filters and stuff like that. And when we tested this earlier, this diesel fuel that we um, got at the pump today, uh, uh, October uh, 30th, uh, uh, 2020, uh, I got a, um, uh, a cloud point of normal diesel fuel at around 20 degrees above zero. So this tells me that this is still uh, summer fuel. And uh, in another month, hopefully we see winter fuel around here and uh, the cloud point will be down to uh, 10 degrees above zero versus uh, 20. So, so I tell my students that, hey, if you're um, getting down uh, to like, you know, 15 degrees above zero, 10 degrees above zero, at 20 degrees above zero, you know, you start looking at uh, putting some type of uh, fuel supplement, uh, a winterizing agent in your fuel tank so you don't get your fuel to start crowding up on you. I also have in this tank, uh, right now I have some kerosene and right now my kerosene is at uh, negative 20 and we see no clouding whatsoever. So so, so I'm just, I just kind of threw kerosene in there as a comparison. Uh, some people will kind of uh, talk a little bit about kerosene as, you know, it's very similar to, you know, number one diesel fuel. Well, it's number one diesel fuel is going to be a lot better as far as it's um, cold weather application, but um, kerosene is, is really good in the cold weather. So uh, you'll see that, that it won't call it up at all. And it'll, it, right now, again, I'm at negative 20. It's going to be some time before I see that. I also put in, in here biodiesel. And um, at, right now, we're at 30 degrees above zero. <laughs> so we're right at, actually, we're right at freezing. And um, I already reached the cloud point and the pour point, which is really bad. It's barely pouring is what it is. So, so um, when you, and, and this is 100% biodiesel is what this is. And I can tell you from experience that around 40 degrees is when I started to see it um, uh, cloud up. So that's 40 degrees above zero, I started to see it cloud up. And right now we're barely below freezing. So, you know, we're at 30 degrees and it's barely flowing. I mean, I got just a little bit of fluid in there. Uh, so I'm gonna put it in and probably give it another five degrees and this whole entire uh, test sample is going to be an ice cube. I could turn it upside down and nothing's going to come out. So obviously uh, biodiesel does not do very well. Uh, in cold temperatures, it's very thick and uh, you're going to need uh, lots of uh, supplements added to your fuel in order to prevent that from happening. I also put it here and I'm measuring cloud points. So I should be at the bottom. My thermometer should be at the bottom. And uh, I put uh, death fluid in there just because I had someone laying around and it says on the directions that you store it between 12 degrees above zero and 86 degrees above zero Fahrenheit. And so right now we are at, um, you know, 30 degrees and I'm seeing no change in it. So I'm mean, looking forward to maybe getting this down to, you know, zero degrees down to, you know, 15 above zero, 10 above zero and see what, see at, see at 12 above zero, what actually happens to our uh, death fluid if you're, let's say your tank heater is not working or something like that, or you're storing this in the back of your uh, truck and it uh, freezes solid. So um, I will uh, come back and we'll um, see where we're at um, with this, but you can see that my diesel fuel, you know, it's clouding up really good. You know, it's not quite to the poor point yet, but it's clouding up very, very cloudy. It's not clear anymore. I can't see through it. Right now we're at zero degrees. So zero degrees, you know, that wax, what I'm worried about is that wax with that uh, fuel that maybe is not heated up 
uh, when you first start it up, is going to plug up your uh, your filter. So obviously, a diesel fuel supplement would be needed at zero degrees uh, in order for um, the wax not to cause problems. I wanted to show you what the um, the four different um, samples look like while I was in the bath of acetone, and you can see that it's bubbling a little bit. So that's um, that's the uh, dry ice down there uh, still um, uh, evaporating or uh, boiling, we'll call it, melting, causing the bath to get down pretty cold. And let's take a look at what my thermometer reads. Thermometer reads, if I could turn this right, negative 100, around negative 90 degrees. So again, pretty cold, don't stick your fingers in it, whatever you do. I'm sorry, that's negative 80, that's what that is. And now it's negative 70, we'll put it back in. So plenty of code in order to get my samples down to, you know, negative 20, negative 30, negative 40 degrees and see what happens. And so I wanted to show you that my, um, my uh, diesel fuel, which is, at, you know, zero degrees right now. Oops, sorry. Zero degrees right now. There you can see this is zero degrees. Take a look at it. It's still flowing. But it's really pretty chunky. <laughs> you know, if you've tried to put that through a filter right now, it would be a big problem. It's really, really chunky. Okay. It's like a slushy is what it's like. If I take a look at my uh, biodiesel, which is at, I mean, probably not so bad. My biodiesel is at, you know, that's, you know, 10 degrees above zero. Okay, if I take a look at that, no, that's a solid ice cube right now. You know, you turn it upside down and nothing's happening, man. So biodiesel, you can see that, you know, it doesn't do very well in cold weather at all because it's so thick. And of course, that's pretty common knowledge. The kerosene, however, you know, we're at negative 40 right now. So there's our kerosene right now. We're really cold at negative 40 degrees. So super cold and it's doing really good. So we take a look at that. Uh, not really covered up at all. There's a whole bunch of frost on the outside of the glass, but that fluid is still very fluid. There's no clouding up whatsoever on that. So doing very, very, very good. If we take a look at my DEF fluid, which is at, you know, positive, sorry, I didn't read the thermometer there, positive 10 degrees. So something should be happening to it, I guess. And if you take a look at it, oh, looks like at the bottom of it. Oh yeah, look at that. See how it's like ice forming down there at the bottom of it? Yep. So that's ice all on the bottom of it. So at 10 degrees above zero, <laughs> it started to, it started to be an ice cube down there. You can see it starting to freeze. So the so the directions were correct on the on the on the container where it says um, uh, stored above 12 degrees. And well, at 10 degrees, you can see what happened with it. So it definitely started to freeze. So not good to keep in the back of the, of your pickup truck on a cold day. You can look for my uh, previous videos on how to set up the, uh, the bath of acetone and uh, CO2 ice in order for it to, uh, to set it up in a container in order to uh, do a uh, cloud pouring and a pour point uh, test for your automotive fluids. This is uh, Scott Norman and if you guys are looking for more educational uh, videos you could uh, look at my Professor Pintang YouTube channel. And I also have a website, just look for ProfessorPintain.com. Thank you very much. You guys have a good day.